Hey everybody, Mike here and welcome to the channel. Well, today I'm going to show you guys how you can change your background in Fusion 360 if you want to change the look and feel, right? Now, this is going to be found in the bottom of your screen right here and there are a bunch of other uh, symbols and options uh, that I'm going to be talking about in another video. Today we're specifically going to be talking about display settings, right? And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a, a simple example object uh, because it will allow me to show you much better what the changes are. OK, so we're going to go up. We're going to click on this uh, checkered uh, panel here called the data panel. And let's go to modeling and we'll just take a random object. Let's see what it will do here. Let's do the Geneva drive. OK, we're going to double click on that. Give it a second to open up. And there you have it. Alrighty. So we don't need this right now. So I'm going to click on the little cross up here to get more workspace. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to go to the option where it says display settings. Now, if I click on that, we're going to start off by looking at the visual style. You can have shaded where you only have shade. And it kind of looks a bit odd, to be honest, looking at that way. And we're going to go in here. Let's do shaded with hidden edges. And you can see we've got shortcuts, control four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I'll show you them individually just so you can see the description better. So shaded with hidden edges, we'll get something like that. So you can kind of see what the construction is. I'm going to go back in. Let's do shaded with visible edges only. So not the hidden ones, which makes it look a little bit more normal, right? We're going to go in again. Let's do the wireframe only, which is kind of neat, especially if you want to do a screen grab, uh, which is nice. We're going to go in again. Let's go to a wireframe with hidden edges. And then we got wireframe with the visible edges. Now, this one can be, um, you know, kind of interesting from a technical standpoint. You can see the outline. You can also see what's hidden. And then finally, we're going to go to wireframe with the visible edges only. So anything that would be in the back, uh, you won't see, right? Uh, I think it's pretty cool to have these options and uh, I use them quite a lot. Alrighty. All right, guys, let's move on to the next one. We're going to go back to display settings. We're going to go to environment. Now, uh, by default, it's set to photo booth. Let's see what else we got as an option. Let's try dark sky. Now, that is uh, quite dark for my taste uh, when I'm actually working, uh, but I guess from a presentation standpoint, it could be something for you to use, right? Uh, I do know that when you're working late at night, uh, you don't want that super bright light in your face. It kind of can be helpful to do it that way, right? All right. So that's a dark one. We'll go to the next one and let's see the gray room. Now, especially for people that are used to working in, for example, Maya and whatnot, this might uh, have a familiar feel to it. But uh, yeah, that's one option. I typically don't use this myself. I usually go with the default, but just so you know that it's there, right? Okay, what else? Um, the photo booth. Now, this is basically the standard. And then we got the Tranquility Blue. Um, from a blue uh, blueprint point of view, it looks kind of cool, I guess. Uh, I can see myself working in this. I haven't so far, but uh, I'll definitely give it a go, right? Okay, next one, uh, Infinity Pool. I don't really get that one. There's kind of a gradient going on here, looks like, where in the middle it's kind of blue grayish and it gets lighter as it moves out. Again, a very personal preference, okay? Uh, let's see, we got the River Rubicon. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's to say about it? Not really a lot. And again, I haven't used this one either. Um, like I said, I typically use the default. But just so you know, it's there. Okay. So we have everything covered in the environment. We're going to go back to the photo booth. And then we're going to jump to the next tab, which is effects. Now, this is kind of neat. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll uh, turn off the ground plane, turn off object shadow, immune occlusion, anti-aliasing, and so forth and so on. So this is kind of the stripped down view, right? And let's turn them on one by one. Uh, the environment dome, I do that one as last. The ground plane first. Um, 
because the ground plane is turned on, we now have a ground shadow that we can turn on or off, right? And we have a ground reflection that we can turn on or off. Now, we're not really seeing the reflection uh, quite so much because of the environment we have. So I'm just going to go back here to the environment. Hang on. I'm going to take that environment. Let's do the... Uh, let's do the infinity pool. There you go. So here you can clearly see we have shadow and we also have a reflection so we can see the bottom of our object. All right. Okay. So we're going to go back to effects here. Uh, let's see. Ground plane turned on. Ground shadow turned on. The ground reflection. And I'll show you what I mean. Pretty neat, right? Then you have object shadow. So the object itself is, um, you know, the light's hitting it. It's creating a shadow. Ambient occlusion, which is always very cool, so we definitely turn that on, and then uh, anti-aliasing. Okay, so those are the effects. Now, for the uh, object visibility, that's uh, a super practical uh, setting. Uh, you can basically choose whatever you want to have included. You can turn off the sketches if you want. You can turn off any uh, joints, uh, uh, the axes, uh, joint origins. Uh, if you have work points set up, uh, work axes, you can basically click through and choose whatever you want or what you don't want. Now, there's not a lot going on here in this uh, sample, so you don't see a lot of differences. But if you have a model where you have sketches included and so forth, you will definitely see that, okay? Alrighty, cool. What else? Um, the camera view. Now, this is kind of a debate. It always is. Um, I tend to like to look at my uh, object in perspective, uh, but work on it in orthographic. And uh, a lot of people tend to work on it in orthographic mode uh, because it uh, gives you a better representation, I would say. What you can do, though, is set this to perspective with ortho faces, just so you know that, right? Now, and then uh, finally, the ground plane offset. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you click on that, what you will see is that the ground plane is set at a certain height compared to where our object is, all right? Now, it's set to adaptive right now, but if we turn that off, you can change that distance. So if you want it to be way down here or really close to the object, you can play with that, right? I usually leave it at adaptive, but there you go. So that's in a nutshell what I wanted to cover in this video. So uh, once again, the display settings, right? So have fun with that. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do, right? Thanks for watching. Bye.